Hello friends, welcome to the Comparator Podcast, where we don't just talk about products, we decide which ones are truly worth your attention. Today we have a special episode, diving into the world of lightweight outboard motors, specifically those delivering 5 horsepower. Joining us in the studio is an expert in outboard motors, a man who knows every last bolt and screw. Let's give a warm welcome to our guest, Andre Greenberg. Hello Chris, glad to be here. Let's dig into what makes one of these motors truly deserving of the title, best. So we have five contenders, the Yamaha F5, Honda BF5, Suzuki DF5, Tohatsu MFS5, and Mercury F5. Andre, let's start with a broad question. When it comes to five horsepower motors, what parameters really matter? Chris, the main focus should definitely be on power, weight, the type of ignition system, whether it has a fuel injector and some others. All of these factors affect how convenient and efficient the motor will be out on the water. Great. Could you explain to our listeners why power is such a focal point? After all, five horsepower sounds the same, but is it really? How do our contenders perform in this regard? Exactly, Chris. Although the power rating for all these motors is nominally the same, there are differences. For example, the Yamaha F5 and Suzuki DF5 engines are tuned to deliver maximum power at higher RPMs, which can be crucial if you need to accelerate quickly. Sounds interesting. What about weight? We all know that extra weight on a boat can be a real issue. You're right. Weight is a critical parameter, especially when it comes to portable motors. For instance, the Suzuki DF5 and Tahatsu MFS5 have the advantage here. They're slightly lighter than their competitors. This makes the motor easier to transport and install. Okay, what about the ignition system? This is one of those factors that can really impact the motor's reliability, right? Absolutely. Most of these motors come with digital ignition systems, which ensure a stable start and more efficient engine operation. But there are specifics. For example, the Honda BF5 has a special feature. It reaches operating RPMs faster thanks to its advanced ignition system. We're also going to talk about fuel injectors. They're not always a standard feature on these motors, are they? That's right, Chris. Of the five motors, only one boasts a fuel injector. This means it provides more precise fuel delivery, leading to better fuel efficiency and lower emissions. Excellent. But how about handling and performance on the water? After all, that's what every user will feel in the end. In our lineup, there are leaders that offer excellent control on the water, especially in choppy conditions. This makes them ideal for those who plan to use their boat actively in various weather conditions. Wow, so many nuances already. Friends, there's more to come. We'll continue to discuss in detail which of these motors truly deserves your attention. Stay with us. There's a lot of useful information ahead. Andre, let's kick off our detailed discussion with a simple question. How important is the weight of an outboard motor? It's not just numbers in the specs, right? Absolutely right, Chris. The weight of the motor is one of the key parameters, especially when it comes to small boats. The lighter the motor, the easier it is to handle. For example, if you have a compact boat, even a couple of kilograms can significantly affect how the vessel behaves on the water. A lightweight motor allows you to maneuver more easily, maintain balance, and feel more confident at the helm, especially in challenging conditions. Got it. What about transportation? Many of our listeners often transport their boats and motors to their destination. Chris, the weight of the engine directly affects the ease of transportation. A lighter motor is easier to carry, mount, and remove from the boat. This is particularly important if you're, say, going fishing and need to take the motor out of the trunk and attach it to the boat each time. A lighter weight makes this task much easier and saves you energy. So lighter means not just more convenient, but also more economical in the long run. That's right. A lighter motor can also help save fuel. When the engine weighs less, the boat requires less power to reach the desired speed. This means you can enjoy longer periods on the water without frequent stops for refueling. This is especially relevant for those who spend a lot of time on the water. Great. Let's look at the specific numbers. What data do we have on weight today? 
As we've mentioned, we have five models under review. Yamaha F5, Honda BF5, Suzuki DF5, Tohatsu MFS5, and Mercury F5M. Most of them weigh around the same, about 27 kilograms. But there's one clear leader in terms of lightness. That's the Suzuki DF5, which weighs only 23.5 kilograms. This model stands out for being easier to carry and install, and it's also better in terms of fuel efficiency. So, if our listeners are looking for a lightweight and economical motor, the Suzuki DF5 would be the best choice. Absolutely. Especially if you have a small boat or need to transport the motor frequently. The lightweight of the Suzuki DF5 makes it more comfortable to use and more economical over long distances. Excellent. Andre, thanks for the clarification. Friends, we're not done yet. There are more details and nuances ahead to help you make the right choice. Don't go anywhere. The best is yet to come. I'd like to remind our listeners that you're tuned in to the Comparator Podcast, and I'm your host, Chris Fleming. I'd like to continue our discussion by focusing on a crucial technical parameter that many people tend to overlook when choosing a lightweight outboard motor, the capacity of the built-in fuel tank. Many might think, it's just a tank, what's the big deal? But the tank's capacity can actually change the entire experience, right? Exactly. The capacity of the built-in fuel tank isn't just a number in the specs. It directly affects how long you can stay on the water without having to return for refueling. For example, if your tank is small and you enjoy long cruises or fishing trips far from shore, you'll have to stop frequently to refill the tank from a jerry can. Anyone who's had to do this in rough waters will know exactly what I mean. So, does that mean the bigger the tank, the better? Or are there some nuances? Of course, bigger isn't always better, but in this case, yes, a larger tank does give you more freedom. For instance, if you're going on a multi-day journey, a bigger tank allows you to focus on the route and relaxation rather than frequent refueling stops. You can just fill up the tank before you set off and then relax, knowing you won't need to interrupt your trip often to top up the fuel. That makes sense. Let's go over the specific models we're reviewing today. How do they compare in terms of tank capacity? Absolutely. Let's start with the Yamaha F5. It has a 1.1 liter tank. That's sufficient for short trips, but if you're planning something longer, you might need to make additional stops for refueling. Got it. What about the others? The Honda BF5 offers 1.5 liters, the largest capacity among the models we're reviewing today. This capacity significantly increases autonomy, reducing the number of stops for refueling. You can enjoy longer periods on the water without the distraction of frequently checking your fuel levels. I see, the Honda BF5 is already starting to stand out. What about the Suzuki DF5? The Suzuki DF5 is equipped with a 1.0 liter tank. It's sufficient for moderate trips, but again, if you're planning extended journeys, you'll need to refuel more often. Understood. And how about the Tohatsu MFS5 and Mercury F5M? The Tohatsu MFS5 has a built-in tank with a capacity of 1.15 liters, slightly more than the Suzuki, but still not the best option for long trips without refueling. On the other hand, the Mercury F5M with its 1.3 liter tank offers a bit more autonomy, which could be useful for longer trips. So, putting it all together, which motor is best for those who don't want to refuel often? The clear leader here is the Honda BF5 with its 1.5 liter tank. This engine provides maximum autonomy on the water, allowing you to focus on enjoying your trip without worrying about frequent refueling. It's the ideal choice for those who value extended cruising. Sounds convincing. Thank you, Andre, for such a detailed breakdown. Friends, stay tuned. There's plenty more to come. Don't go anywhere. We're continuing our comparison. I'd like to remind everyone that today we're focusing on lightweight outboard motors. Next, we'll determine which one is the most fuel efficient. Andre, tell us, how do things stand with this crucial technical characteristic of outboard motors? Yes, Chris, you're absolutely right. Fuel consumption is one of the key factors that directly impacts a boat owner's operating costs. The less fuel a motor consumes, the less you have to spend on gasoline, which in turn extends the cruising range on a single tank. 
This is especially important if you're planning long trips, like fishing on remote lakes. So, fuel efficiency isn't just about saving money. It's also about being able to go farther and stay out longer without worrying that you'll run out of gas halfway. Exactly, Chris. Plus, it's important to remember that a motor's fuel efficiency also impacts the environment. The less fuel we burn, the fewer emissions we release into the atmosphere. So choosing a fuel-efficient motor is an investment not only in your budget, but also in the environment. Let's talk about specific models. How do they perform in terms of fuel consumption? Sure. Take the Yamaha F5, for example. This motor consumes about 1.5 liters of fuel per hour under average load. It's a decent figure for short trips, but for longer journeys, it might seem a bit less economical. What about the other models? The Honda BF5 is slightly better, consuming about 1.4 liters per hour. But again, if we're talking about extended cruises, there are more economical options. For instance, the Suzuki DF5 uses only 1.1 liters per hour, making it the true leader in fuel efficiency among the models we're comparing. So, if I want to maximize fuel savings, the Suzuki DF5 is my best bet. Absolutely right, Chris. The Suzuki DF5 not only saves fuel but also minimizes environmental impact, which is particularly important for a responsible boat owner. And what about the Tohatsu MFS5 and Mercury F5M? The Tohatsu MFS5 consumes about 1.2 liters per hour, which is a good balance between efficiency and power. The Mercury F5M, like the Yamaha F5, consumes 1.5 liters per hour, making it less attractive for long-distance cruising. Thanks, Andre. The conclusion is clear. If you want to save fuel and avoid worrying about running out of gas, the Suzuki DF5 is the best choice. Stay with us. We've got plenty more interesting insights coming up. It's time to discuss a technical care characteristic that often confuses the general public, the gear ratios of outboard motors. It may sound complicated, but don't worry, we're going to break it down in detail. To help us with this, we have our marine technology expert, Andre. Andre, let's start with the basics. What exactly are gear ratios and why are they so important? Yes, Chris, gear ratios are indeed a crucial element in the operation of an outboard motor. Essentially, they determine how the engine's power is transmitted to the propeller shaft. For example, if you have a gear ratio of 2 to 1, it means the propeller shaft makes one rotation for every two rotations of the engine. This is important because it directly affects the boat's thrust and top speed. So, the right gear ratio can either make your boat zip across the waves or slowly pull a heavy load, correct? Exactly. For instance, higher gear ratios like 2.15 to 1 increase thrust at lower speeds. This is particularly useful if you need to accelerate quickly or tow a heavy load. On the other hand, lower gear ratios like 1.92 to 1 contribute to higher top speeds. The propeller spins faster and you achieve greater speed at the same engine RPM. Let's move on to specific models. How do the Yamaha F5 and Honda BF5 stand out in this regard? These models have a gear ratio of 2.08 to 1, which provides a good balance between thrust and speed. This makes them versatile. You can use them for leisurely cruising or more dynamic tasks. For those looking for a motor that balances pulling power with top speed, they are an excellent choice. Sounds like an ideal compromise. What about the Suzuki DF5? It has a different gear ratio, doesn't it? Yes, the Suzuki DF5 has a gear ratio of 1.92 to 1, allowing it to achieve higher speeds at higher RPMs. If your goal is speed, this motor would be a great option. However, Keep in mind that at low speeds and under heavy loads, where significant thrust is needed, it may be less efficient. So, if I understand correctly, Suzuki is the choice for speed, but if you want more versatility… Exactly. The Tohatsu MFS5 and Mercury F5M, for example, have a gear ratio of 2.15 to 1. This offers excellent balance between thrust and speed, making them suitable for a wide range of situations whether it's starting from a standstill or cruising at high speeds. They are truly versatile. So, for most tasks, Tohatsu and Mercury are top choices, but if you need a bit more speed, the Suzuki DF5 is worth considering. Thanks, Andre. Well, that was just one part of our discussion, and there's much more to come. Stay tuned. 
Let me remind our listeners that you're tuned in to another episode of Comparator, where we dissect products down to the smallest details to help you make the best choice. Today, we're discussing lightweight outboard motors. We're now focusing on a technical characteristic that can drastically change your perception of these motors, noise and vibration. After all, when you're out on the water, especially for extended periods, comfort is crucial. And this is where our expert Andre comes in. Andre, let's talk about why noise and vibration are so important when choosing an outboard motor. Absolutely, Chris. Noise and vibration are indeed critical factors that directly impact the quality of your boating experience. Imagine this. You're setting out for a long cruise on a lake or river, and your motor is roaring while the boat is shaking. That's hardly a pleasant experience. Low levels of noise and vibration not only enhance comfort, but also make your time on the water more peaceful and relaxing. Yeah, nothing ruins a day in nature like the roar of a motor. So, let's look at how different models handle this issue. Take the Yamaha F5, for example. How does it perform in terms of noise and vibration? The Yamaha F5 is really impressive in this regard. This model is equipped with an anti-vibration system that significantly reduces both noise and vibration levels. The motor runs quietly and smoothly, which is especially valuable during long trips. If you plan to spend a lot of time on the water, the Yamaha F5 will provide you with a comfortable and quiet boating experience. Great, and what about the Honda BF5? I've heard this motor is also quite good in terms of quiet operation, Oh, the Honda BF5 is a gem for those who value silence. This motor stands out due to its innovative design and the use of high-quality materials. It's equipped with an effective vibration damping system, making it one of the quietest motors on the market. If minimal noise impact is important to you, the Honda BF5 would be the ideal choice. It seems Honda has really focused on user comfort. What can you tell us about the Suzuki DF5? How does it fare? The Suzuki DF5 is also a strong contender. The motor features an engine balancing system that minimizes noise and vibration. This model provides a high level of comfort on the water and reduces noise impact on the environment. If you're looking for a balance between performance and comfort, the Suzuki DF5 is an excellent option. It sounds like all these models are aiming for quiet operation, but the Tohatsu MFS5 has something to offer in this regard too, right? Absolutely. The Tohatsu MFS-5 has established itself as a motor with low noise and vibration levels. Thanks to its thoughtful design and anti-vibration system, this motor delivers calm and comfortable boating with virtually no unpleasant sounds. And finally, the Mercury F5M. What does it bring to the table? The Mercury F5M doesn't disappoint. It's equipped with a balancing system and anti-vibration features that deliver excellent results in reducing noise and vibration. This makes it one of the best choices for those seeking comfort and minimal sound interference. So to sum up, it looks like the Honda BF5 is the leader in terms of quietness and comfort, right? That's right, Chris. If a low noise and vibration level is your top priority, the Honda BF5 is your best bet. Its advanced technology and design provide exceptional comfort, making it an excellent choice for those who want to enjoy maximum convenience and minimal environmental impact. Sounds convincing, but we're not done yet. We still have several interesting technical aspects of lightweight outboard motors that could help you make the right choice. Stay tuned. Andre, here's my next question. What is corrosion protection for an engine? And why is it so important? Yes, you're absolutely right. Corrosion protection is one of those factors that many people don't think about when buying an engine, but it plays a crucial role in its longevity. Outboard motors operate in a harsh aquatic environment, and corrosion is the number one enemy. This is especially true in saltwater, which literally eats away at metal. Good corrosion protection helps to avoid frequent maintenance and extends the motor's service life which in turn enhances overall reliability and safety during operation. So if I understand correctly, it's not just a matter of aesthetics or minor issues. It can be a matter of life and death for the engine. Let's discuss in more detail how different models handle this challenge. Let's start with the Yamaha F5. How do they fare in terms of corrosion protection? 
The Yamaha F5 really stands out in this regard. They use YDC30 anti-corrosion coating combined with zinc anodes. This combination creates a robust barrier that protects the engine from the aggressive aquatic environment. The anodes act as a kind of sacrificial material, shielding the metal parts of the engine from corrosion. This makes Yamaha motors some of the most durable in their segment. That sounds impressive. And what about the Honda BF5? I've heard they also take protection very seriously. Yes, the Honda BF5 is another strong player in this field. They use high-quality anti-corrosion coatings and materials and have also provided internal protection to prevent corrosion. This is a very important aspect because corrosion can start from the inside where it's not visible. Honda has made sure to protect the motor both externally and internally, which makes it extremely reliable and durable. So Honda has really thought of everything down to the smallest detail. Now let's discuss the Suzuki DF5. What can they boast in terms of corrosion protection? Suzuki DF5 is also on par with the others. They use protection based on special alloys and zinc anodes. These components create a reliable barrier against corrosion, ensuring a long service life for the motor. Suzuki always strives to offer a balance between durability and performance, and this is evident in their approach to corrosion protection. It seems that all the major brands take the protection of their engines very seriously. How does the Tohatsu MFS-5 measure up? The Tohatsu MFS-5 truly stands out among its competitors. They use a unique anti-corrosion coating and stainless steel components. This makes it very reliable, especially if the motor is frequently in the water. Tohatsu seems to say, we are ready for any conditions, which inspires confidence in the quality of their product. That sounds very impressive. Finally, what about the Mercury F5M? How do they handle corrosion protection? The Mercury F5M offers multi-layer corrosion protection, including special coatings and anodes. This approach ensures excellent durability and reliability, even in the most challenging conditions. Mercury has always been renowned for the quality of their engines, and they have not disappointed here. Overall, we have quite a range to choose from, but if we're talking about clear leaders, who would you highlight? If we focus on corrosion protection, the Yamaha F5 really stands out with its multi-layer pr protective coatings and the use of zinc anodes. This combination provides exceptional corrosion protection and a long service life. For those seeking reliability and longevity, the Yamaha F5 is an excellent choice. Thank you, Andre. We have many more interesting technical aspects to discuss. I'd like to remind our listeners that you're tuned in to Comparator, the podcast where we analyze a wide range of products to determine which one is the best in its class. Today, we're going to discuss the throttle and steering systems of lightweight outboard motors. Joining us to help break this down is our expert, Andre. Andre, could you tell us how important it is to consider the control system when choosing an outboard motor? Absolutely, Chris. The throttle and steering system is, you could say, the heart of any outboard motor. The ease and precision with which you can control the boat affect not only comfort, but also safety on the water. This is especially crucial when navigating challenging routes or narrow passages, where every turn needs to be calculated precisely. And when we talk about different models, how do they handle this task? Let's start with the Yamaha F5. What do they offer? The Yamaha F5 is a reliable workhorse when it comes to control systems. It has a fairly comfortable throttle grip and an integrated steering system. Initially, it may not seem intuitive, especially for beginners, but once you get used to it, the handling becomes quite stable and reliable. It's a great choice if you're willing to spend some time getting accustomed to it. So the Yamaha F5 requires some getting used to, but works like clockwork once you do. What about the Honda BF5? I've heard they focus on user-friendliness. Exactly, the Honda BF5 prioritizes ergonomics. Their throttle grip feels great in the hand, and the steering mechanism operates smoothly and accurately. The system is genuinely intuitive, making this motor an excellent choice for those who want to feel confident and comfortable on the water from the very first moment. Sounds like the perfect option for beginners. How does the Suzuki DF5 measure up? I've heard they offer something quite advanced. 
Yes, the Suzuki DF5 really stands out from the competition. Their control system is one of the most modern. It's light, smooth, and highly responsive. This is a case where you can literally feel every movement of the boat and maneuver with maximum precision. If maneuverability and comfort are your top priorities, then the Suzuki DF5 is an excellent choice. Impressive. Now what about the Tohatsu MFS5? What's unique about them? The Tohatsu MFS5 offers reliability and simplicity. The control system isn't as responsive as Suzuki's, but it works consistently and is easy to master. It's a good choice for those looking for a straightforward and understandable motor without any extra complexities. So Tohatsu focuses on stability and simplicity. And what can you say about the Mercury F5M? The Mercury F5M strikes a golden mean. Their control system balances simplicity and reliability. A comfortable grip and smooth steering mechanism make handling easy though. As you pointed out, it might not be as responsive as some other models. So to sum up, which model would you recommend for those who want the most comfortable boat handling? If we're talking about the control system, the Suzuki DF5 definitely stands out. Its advanced control system provides maximum responsiveness and smooth maneuvering. It's the kind of motor that allows you to feel completely confident and comfortable on the water. Thanks, Andre. We have a lot more exciting content coming up, so stay tuned. Welcome back to our show. Andre, let's discuss an aspect that might not be obvious to most, but is extremely important for anyone choosing an outboard motor, the length of the shaft. How important do you think this parameter is for the end user? The length of the shaft is indeed a critical parameter that affects a lot of things, from the compatibility of the motor with the boat to the overall efficiency and safety of navigation. The shaft is the vertical part of the motor that goes into the water. Its length determines how deeply the propeller will be submerged, which in turn influences the performance of the entire motor. Interesting. Let's go through some models then. For example, the Yamaha F5, what are its features concerning shaft length? Are there any unique advantages here? The Yamaha F5 is a very versatile model. It offers several options for shaft length, making it an excellent choice for a wide range of boat types. For instance, if you have a small fishing boat, you can choose a short shaft that provides excellent maneuverability and stability. On the other hand, if you have a larger boat, a long shaft will help increase stability and reduce turbulence on the water. So the Yamaha F5 offers a kind of flexibility that allows you to adjust the motor for specific tasks and boats. But what about the Honda BF5? They are also known for their quality and reliability. Yes, that's absolutely right. The Honda BF5 also offers a choice of shaft lengths, which really helps to adapt the motor to different operating conditions. Just like with the Yamaha, you have the option to select the optimal shaft length to ensure the stability and efficiency of the motor's performance. Honda traditionally focuses on the versatility of their motors, and the BF5 is no exception here. Got it, but there are other models worth mentioning as well. For example, the Suzuki DF5. What can they boast about? The Suzuki DF5 stands out by offering a wide range of shaft lengths allowing users to fine-tune the motor to specific needs. This is especially important for larger boats, where a long shaft helps significantly improve stability and reduce turbulence. Suzuki has really focused on quality and flexibility, making this model particularly attractive to discerning users. Sounds impressive. And what about the Tohatsu MFS5? This brand is known for its reliability. How do they fare when it comes to shaft length? The Tohatsu MFS5 is indeed a reliable motor, and it also offers the option to choose the shaft length. This model maintains all the key characteristics associated with the Tohatsu brand, durability, reliability, and stability on the water. The choice of shaft length allows you to find the optimal solution for your type of boat, which definitely adds value to this model. And finally, let's not forget about the Mercury F5M. This motor also offers several shaft length options right? That's right. The Mercury F5M is a balanced option that offers both versatility and reliability. Like the other models, it provides a choice of shaft lengths, making it suitable for different types of boats. Mercury has always been known for their consistent performance on the water, and this is no exception. 
To sum up, which motor do you think stands out in this parameter? Of all the models we've discussed, I'd highlight the Suzuki DF5. They offer the widest range of shaft lengths and excellent build quality. This allows for a precise adjustment of the motor to specific operating conditions, which is especially important for achieving maximum efficiency and comfort. Great choice. Thanks, Andre, for such a detailed analysis. I think our listeners now have a much clearer understanding of why shaft length is not just a technical parameter, but a genuinely important factor when choosing a motor. We'll continue with our podcast, and there's still a lot more interesting stuff ahead. Hello, everyone tuned into Comparator. We're continuing our comparison of lightweight outboard motors. Step by step, we've arrived at our next technical parameter, maximum engine RPM. Andre, let's break down why this parameter is important for outboard motors. Maximum engine RPM, or revolutions per minute, is indeed a crucial metric. It determines how fast the engine's crankshaft is rotating, which directly affects how much power the motor can deliver. The higher the RPM, the faster the boat can accelerate and reach top speed. But there's a trade-off here. Higher RPM can increase engine wear and tear and lead to higher fuel consumption. I see. So it's about finding the right balance between power and longevity. Let's move on to specific models. For instance, Yamaha F5. How does it perform in terms of RPM? The Yamaha F5 has a maximum RPM range of 5,000 to 6,000, which is pretty standard for motors in this class. This range provides excellent performance and speed. Yamaha is known for its reliable construction, and these motors handle high RPMs well, delivering consistent power and efficiency on the water. So, the Yamaha F5 is a great choice for those looking for a reliable and powerful motor. But what about the Honda BF5? Its RPM range is a bit lower, right? Yes, the Honda BF5 has a maximum RPM range of 4500 to 5500 slightly lower than some of its competitors. However, Honda compensates for this with a highly efficient combustion system and better fuel economy. The lower RPM range also reduces engine wear, which extends the engine's lifespan and decreases maintenance frequency. Efficiency and reliability are always valuable. How does the Suzuki DF5 stack up in this field? Absolutely. The Suzuki DF5 also has an RPM range of 5,000 to 6,000, making it competitive in terms of power and performance. This motor offers excellent speed and reliability, similar to the Yamaha F5. Its high RPM range, combined with superior build quality, makes it a great option for those seeking a powerful and dependable motor. So we can say the Suzuki DF5 is a solid contender in this category. What about the Tohatsu MFS5? They're known for their durability, right? Exactly, Chris. The Tohatsu MFS-5 falls within the same 5,000-6,000 RPM range. Tohatsu has always been renowned for its durability and longevity, and this motor is no exception. The high RPM range ensures excellent performance, and the motor remains reliable even under maximum load. Reliability at high RPMs is always a big plus. But let's also look at the Mercury F5M. Do they have the same RPM specs? Yes, the Mercury F5M also has a maximum RPM range of 5,000 to 6,000, which is consistent with most competitors in this segment. Mercury is known for the quality of its components and stable performance at high RPMs. This makes their motors a good choice for those who value steady and reliable operation. To sum it up, Yamaha F5, Suzuki DF5, Tohatsu FS5, and Mercury F5M all offer a great balance of power and performance at high RPMs. Meanwhile, the Honda BF5, while lower in maximum RPM, excels in fuel efficiency and durability. Exactly. The choice of motor depends on what you prioritize, maximum speed and power, or efficiency and reliability. Thanks, Andre. I hope our listeners now have a better understanding of what to consider when choosing an outboard motor. We'll continue with our podcast, and there's still plenty more interesting content ahead. So we're continuing and we're going to be discussing one of the key systems of an outboard motor, the ignition system. Andre, imagine that the motor is the heart of the boat. Tell our listeners why the ignition system is so important and how does it affect the performance of the motor? Absolutely, Chris. You're spot on with that analogy. If the motor is the heart, then the ignition system is its rhythm. 
The ignition system is crucial because it's responsible for igniting the fuel-air mixture inside the cylinders, which starts the engine and keeps it running. So the quality of the ignition system directly impacts important factors like how easily the motor starts, how smoothly it runs at different speeds, and ultimately, the longevity of the engine itself. That sounds serious. So how do different motor models handle this task? Let's start with the Yamaha F5. What are the features of its ignition system? The Yamaha F5 uses a CDI system, that's a capacitor discharge ignition. This system is known for its reliability and ease of maintenance. CDI provides a strong and consistent spark, ensuring easy and reliable starts in any conditions. Plus, it has a long lifespan and low maintenance requirements, making it an excellent choice for those who value reliability and simplicity. Reliability and simplicity are always top priorities. What about the Honda BF5? Are they also using a CDI system? Yes, the Honda BF5 is also equipped with a CDI system. Honda has always been known for its quality and reliability, and their ignition system is no exception. The CDI in the Honda BF5 ensures not only consistent starting and operation, but also helps reduce fuel consumption and emissions, making the engine more eco-friendly and economical. Fuel efficiency and environmental friendliness are crucial these days. But I heard that the Suzuki DF5 takes a different approach with a TCI system. What are the benefits of that? Great question, Chris. The Suzuki DF5 indeed uses a TCI system, that's transistor-controlled ignition. This system is characterized by high precision and efficiency, which contributes to excellent fuel economy and lower emissions. TCI also provides stable performance across different RPMs and a long lifespan, making it a strong contender among other motors in this class. It sounds like TCI has some clear advantages. What about the Tohatsu MFS5? They seem to stick with a CDI system like Yamaha and Honda, right? That's right. The Tohatsu MFS5 also uses a CDI system, similar to what you'll find on the Yamaha and Honda models. This system ensures reliable starting and stable engine performance while requiring less maintenance. Tohatsu focuses heavily on the durability of their engines, and this definitely applies to their ignition systems as well. And lastly, Mercury F5M. They also have a CDI system like most of the competition. What are its key features? Yes. The Mercury F5M is also equipped with a CDI system, which provides reliable and efficient engine operation, much like Yamaha and Honda. Mercury is known for the reliability and quality of its components, making their engines a good choice for those who value stability and tried-and-true technology. So to sum up, we see that the TCI system in the Suzuki DF5 really stands out due to its precision and efficiency, offering great fuel economy and minimal emissions. But the CDI systems in Yamaha, Honda, Tohatsu, and Mercury also perform exceptionally well, providing reliability and low maintenance. Exactly, Chris. If you're looking for high efficiency and low emissions, the Suzuki DF5 with TCI is an optimal choice. But if you prefer tried and tested technology with minimal upkeep, the CDI systems in Yamaha, Honda, Tohatsu, and Mercury are excellent options. Thanks, Andrew. That was really insightful. Folks, that's it for this segment of the Comparator Podcast. Stay tuned, there's a lot more coming up. And we're back. Just a reminder that you're listening to the Comparator Podcast, and I'm your host, Chris Fleming. Today, we're discussing a topic that's on the minds of many a boating enthusiast, choosing the right low-power outboard motor for your boat. In this segment of our show, we're going to focus on the engine's fuel intake system. Let's turn to our expert. What can you tell us about it? Why is the fuel injection system so important to an engine? Absolutely, Chris. Imagine your outboard motor as the heart of your boat. Just like a heart pumps blood, the fuel intake system supplies the engine with a fuel-air mixture that makes it run. The ignition system is like the heartbeat rhythm, and fuel injection is what fuels that rhythm. The better and more precise the intake system operates, the easier the engine starts, the smoother it runs across different conditions, and ultimately, the longer it lasts. So you're saying if the fuel intake system isn't working properly, the boat might sputter or even stall completely. Exactly. If the intake system isn't functioning correctly, you might have trouble starting the engine. It could choke or run unevenly, 
especially when switching between modes. Let's get more specific about different motor models now. Starting with the Yamaha F5, I understand this model is equipped with a traditional carburetor. What are the pros and cons here? That's right, Chris. The Yamaha F5 uses a carburetor intake system, which has been around for a long time and has proven itself reliable. The advantage is that this system is quite dependable and ensures stable engine performance in various conditions. However, carburetors generally require regular maintenance and calibration to maintain optimal performance. So, if you're not up for frequent maintenance, the Yamaha might be a bit of a hassle. Yes, regular maintenance is a must to keep it efficient. But if you're willing to spend some time on tuning, this engine will reward you with consistent performance. Got it. What about the Honda BF5? I've heard it also has a carburetor, but with some improvements. What's that about? You're right, Chris. The Honda BF5 also uses a carburetor, but they've made several enhancements to improve the fuel intake accuracy. This results in more stable operation and better fuel efficiency. The system strikes an optimal balance between power and efficiency while reducing emissions. Sounds like a more refined version of the carburetor, doesn't it? But I'm curious about the Suzuki DF5, which uses multi-point fuel injection. That's a whole different story, right? Absolutely. The Suzuki DF5 stands out with its multi-point fuel injection system. This is a modern solution that provides more precise delivery of the fuel mixture, improving combustion efficiency. As a result, you get more power, fewer emissions, and stable engine performance across all RPMs. It seems like Suzuki's injection system is a step ahead compared to the carburetors used by competitors. Is that the case? You could say that. While carburetor systems, like those in Yamaha, Honda, and Tohatsu, are quite reliable and time-tested, the multi-point fuel injection in the Suzuki DF5 offers significant advantages in terms of performance and efficiency. What about the Tohatsu MFS5? I see they also use a carburetor, but with some tweaks. Does this improve things? Yes, the Tohatsu MFS5 has a carburetor system similar to those used by Yamaha and Honda, but with added technologies to enhance fuel delivery accuracy. This contributes to more efficient engine operation and reduces the need for frequent maintenance. Interesting. And what about the Mercury F5M? They also use a carburetor, right? Yes, Chris. The Mercury F5M features a modern carburetor known for its reliability and precision. It incorporates technologies that ensure stable and efficient engine operation, enhancing both performance and fuel economy. So, in summary, would you say the Suzuki DF5 with its multi-point fuel injection takes the lead? Exactly, Chris. The Suzuki DF5 really stands out from its competitors thanks to its multi-point fuel injection system. This system allows for maximum power and efficiency, reducing emissions and maintaining stable engine operation. While carburetor systems have their benefits, the multi-point injection in the Suzuki DF5 is a more modern and efficient solution. Fantastic. Thanks, Andre, for such a comprehensive analysis. I think our listeners will now have a much easier time making their choice. And, and so, it's time to wrap up our comparison. If you've ever chosen an outboard motor, you know it's not an easy task. Every feature can play a key role in how well the motor performs on the water and how convenient it is to use. And of course, every manufacturer will always claim their brand is the best. We analyzed five models of lightweight outboard motors from leading manufacturers across 11 technical criteria, and our expert, Andre, will help us sum it all up. Andre, hello. Ready to discuss which motor is the best? Hi, Chris. Absolutely. Let's break it all down. Great. Let's start with the weight of the motor. It may seem like a small detail, but weight matters, especially when every kilogram counts. Who comes out on top here? The Suzuki DF5, no doubt about it. It weighs just 23.5 kilograms, which makes it an excellent choice for those who value ease of transportation. You can easily install and remove this motor without much effort. A lightweight motor is definitely a plus, but let's talk about fuel tanks. Did anyone surprise us with the capacity of their built-in fuel tank? Yes, and that would be the Honda BF5 with its 1.5 liter tank. For those who love long journeys and want to minimize stops for refueling, this motor is a real find. 
I see. What about fuel consumption? After all, efficiency is always a strong argument for choosing a motor. Once again, the Suzuki DF5 leads the pack. It consumes just 1.1 liters per hour, making it the most fuel efficient in our lineup. Saving on fuel is always nice. But what about gear ratios? Which models offer the best balance between speed and torque? The Tohatsu MFS5 and Mercury F5M are two strong contenders. They have gear ratios that provide good low-end torque and high-end speed. However, if you're looking for maximum speed, the Suzuki DF5 with a gear ratio of 1.921 is your best bet. That sounds impressive, but here's what really interests me. Noise and vibration. How much do these motors interfere with enjoying the peace and quiet on the water? The Honda BF5 stands out here. It's one of the quietest and most vibration-resistant motors, making it a great choice for those who want minimal impact on the environment and maximum comfort. Comfort is always important, but let's not forget about anti-corrosion protection. Salt water and time can do a lot of damage. In this regard, the Yamaha F5 is unmatched. Its multi-layer coatings and use of zinc anodes provide excellent corrosion protection and durability. A well-protected motor is half the battle. But what about handling? Which motor is the most responsive and easy to maneuver? Once again, the Suzuki DF5 stands out. Its throttle and steering system are just superb, providing smooth maneuvers and high responsiveness. Sounds like the perfect choice for those who value control on the water. But let's think about power. Which models perform best at high RPMs? All the motors perform well, but the Yamaha F5, Suzuki DF5, Tohatsu MFS5, and Mercury F5M stand out with their high RPM range of 5,000-6,000 RPM. This provides excellent power and performance. High RPMs are always a plus for performance. What about the ignition system? The Suzuki DF5 is ahead again. Its TCI ignition system provides high precision and efficiency, which positively impacts fuel economy and reduces emissions. And of course, fuel injection. How do they stack up here? The Suzuki DF5 with its multi-point fuel injection system is simply unmatched. This system ensures precise fuel mixture delivery, leading to improved combustion efficiency and reduced emissions. Andre, if we put all these criteria together, which motor would you call the winner? Considering all the characteristics, the Suzuki DF5 really stands out as a leader. Its lightweight, fuel efficiency, corrosion resistance, and high power make it an excellent choice. Despite the strong points of the other models, the Suzuki DF5 shines with its versatility and high level of performance. Well, it seems like the Suzuki DF5 has earned the title of the best motor in the lightweight 5-horsepower outboard category. Thank you, Andre, for the detailed breakdown. We'll continue to search for the best products for our listeners in future episodes. Well, folks, that wraps up today's episode where we took a deep dive into low-powered outboard motors. We went through the models from Yamaha, Honda, Suzuki, Tohatsu, and Mercury, evaluated them based on key parameters, and tried to figure out which one truly deserves your attention. Andre, what's your final take? Chris, each of these motors has its own strengths, and of course the choice will always depend on your personal preferences and the conditions you'll be operating in. Yamaha offers excellent anti-corrosion protection, Honda provides quiet operation and comfort, while the Suzuki DF5 impressed us with its versatility. So it really comes down to what you're looking for in an outboard motor. Exactly. At the end of the day, as we always say, choosing a motor is a personal decision. Our job is to help you navigate the details and make an informed choice. And we hope our review helped you do just that. After all, there's nothing better than heading out on the water with confidence in your motor. Absolutely right. So if you enjoyed our review, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel, Comparator, so you won't miss any new episodes and comparisons. And if you already have experience with these motors, please share it in the comments. Your feedback is really valuable to us. Your comments can help others make their choice. So don't hesitate to share your thoughts. Until next time, friends, and happy shopping. Remember, we're always here to help you choose the best. Music